Declan Boner, we're here in Crow Park. It was the Ulster final, Tyrone versus Monaghan, and it's Tyrone who have came out on top, 16 points to 15. What did you make of the game? Yeah, listen, it was an uh, intriguing game. I thought the first half, Munnan, you know, Munnan didn't get to the pace of the game at all, going in at half time, five down. And, you know, you'd have to say that Tyrone deserved their five point lead, but whatever was said in the dress at half time, they came out fighting in the second half. And that uh, third quarter, they, they won it six points to two, and all of a sudden it's a one point game. And the last quarter was intriguing stuff. And uh, some fascinating aspects of play and ultimately uh, Tyrone won it by a point and probably over the 75 minutes they served won it Yeah that was going to be my question, was the better team on the day Tyrone? I think they'd done enough in the first half, I think being 5 points up at half time and really Monaghan didn't come out of the blocks and uh, you know Rory Began wasn't bothered in the first half with his, with his kick out, Tyrone were pressing really hard and uh, you know they, they got a lot of turnovers and ultimately went in 5 points ahead at half time and you know second half uh, they really pushed on the, on the, on the Tyrone kick outs it was, it was flipped round and all of a sudden it's thrown under pressure and uh, you'd, you'd felt at that stage then going into that last water break that there's only going to be 1-1 and that was Monaghan but in fairness to Tyrone, uh, Darren McCurry kicked two really vital scores. One was a, a brain mark, I think was the, 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 the clincher in the end up. But uh, yeah, it was intriguing stuff in that last quarter. And before the game started, we were talking and you said to me that the kick outs here today is probably going to be the difference. And it was all about the goalies today. We've seen obviously the kick outs and pressing the kick outs, but even the goalies themselves were pressing the opposite kick outs. Yeah, exactly. It was amazing stuff. And, you know, the, the way the game has moved on, we've seen the two best, uh, two of the best keepers. You know, we have, we have, a, we have Sean Patton and Donegal, who's, who's equally as adaptable uh, and, and a top class keeper. You have the likes of Stephen Cluxon, who's, who's no longer playing. But these two guys out here are absolutely top class and uh, you know they're playing as an extra man they're out around the middle of the field and we saw in the last that last 10 minutes where Rory Began was taking a kick out and it was uh, Niall Morgan was up pressing in the full forward line so yeah uh, stuff that you would not see happen uh, back, in, back in the day you know Absolutely not and I was speaking to Brian Dewar there and he said oh, it's brilliant it's great to have that extra player but he said my god I don't like seeing it on the sideline when the ball's going down by him and he's in the midfield area. Yeah exactly yeah it's, from, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a good place from a manager's point of view to be looking at that there but listen it's the way the game has, has moved on and uh, you know teams are, are using it now and as I say two of the best teams uh, that, that can because of the player that they have and Nets is begging and, and Morgan and Tyrone and Munnan are very very good at that there but you know Banty and Munnan will be disappointed. Uh, th this evening that you know for whatever reason they didn't just get to the pitch of that game in the first half and you know it was Tyrone that re really were the dominant force and going in 11 points to 6 up at half time and uh, you know you could only see 1-1 one -one in the second half but in fairness in fairness to Munn in that third period they were very very good and uh, ultimately it came down to straight down the last quarter and a, a vital score also from Cahill McShane coming off the bench I think proved crucial and in the first half, the tactic by Tyrone was really get that direct ball inside. We've seen Matty Donnelly, he would stay in there and then he might swap out with Darren McCurry. They played very well off each other in there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, actually, they, they were very, very good. Matty Donnelly was superb in that first half and they really used him as a target man. Normally, Matty would st spend a while in and come back out the field, but he stayed in for a majority of that first half. Himself and McCurry and Mark Bradley was playing off them. And between the, the three of them, I think they kicked six, seven points from playing that first period. And, uh, you know, Munnan, Munnan were very, very... They, they found it difficult to contain them. And uh, but the supply started stopped in the second half, going into those uh, Tyrone players, and all of a sudden, Matty Donnelly comes out around the middle of the field, they put Cahill McShane inside. But you know, five points in the second half from Tyrone would be a worry from a Brian Dewar point of view. Absolutely, and what was the difference there? You know, it, as you said to me at one point there in the second half, you said the game's flipped on its head. You know, it, it was Monaghan that were nearly in control then, especially for that start of that second half. Yeah, exactly. I think Monaghan, looking at it, you know, I didn't really think they brought any intent to that first half, and they did to the start of the second half. There's no doubt about that there, and they really played with great intensity in that second half. And um, you know, you could see that the Monaghan supporters were getting, you know, they were, they were urging the team on. There was, again, it's been a very emo emotional couple of weeks for Monaghan and everyone involved in GA and, and, and Monaghan, and you know, the tragedy of two weeks ago was still very, 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 very. Um, fresh in the minds of people and you know they lost the, the under 20 finalist night after after a replay so that's been fresh in their mind and you know it probably had a bearing there's no doubt about it but in fairness they showed great character in that second half and you know ultimately come up a point short on a day and that's probably that's their first half performance that really let them down but you know they went down fighting uh, as you'd expect from any Monaghan side. And just speaking on those supporters, um, I've almost forgot what it's like to be in Crow Park with that noise it was just unbelievable. 
at us exactly you know there's only 18,000 here and there was times in that last quarter you could hardly hear yourself think to be quite honest it was great to see this, uh, the supporters getting back into the pitch and looking we're looking forward to the semi-finals now and hopefully they're talking about maybe 40,000 getting in for an All-Ireland final which would be great to see it getting back to some sort of normality but again it's, it's the end of the Ulster Championship and again what a fascinating Ulster Championship we had some outstanding games and again the Ulster final didn't let us down Exactly, and thank God for the Ulster Championship. I've got to cover a lot of it, and it's been unbelievable. Probably a highlight for me was the Derry Donegal game. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, that was uh, you know from our point of view, it was a real doer battle, and went down the wire, and you know superb kick and Patrick won the, won the day for us that day. But uh, Ulster's very very tight. There's no doubt. I mean, you're talking about four teams now in Division One, and you have the likes of Derry coming knocking on the door now, and uh, it's always going to be competitive. And uh, yeah, there's no doubt that this the 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 the, the provincial t- uh, championship that has all that you know to get all the attention because of the closeness of it and uh, that's not going to change anytime soon and you just don't know what way it's going to go and you wouldn't have been able to call that it would be a Tyrone Monaghan Ulster final you know you just don't know how massive is it for the likes of Brian Dewar and Fergal Logan on their first year to be Ulster champions yeah, listen, it's big, there's no doubt about it, and, uh, you know, they've gone about their business, and especially in that first half today, I mean, the question was asked to me early on, did they see much difference? Yeah, when we played them early on in the league, they were doing, they, they were kicking a lot more ball inside, but as the league went on, and probably the match against against Kerry, you know, they kind of reverted back to back to type, really, and, and, and ran ran a lot of the ball, but in fairness, in the first half today, they were kicking ball inside, and Matty Donnelly was doing a lot of damage inside, and as I said, uh, Darren McCurry and the likes of Mark Bradley were feeding off that, so they have changed their game, and listen, they're going to need to take it to another level now as to, as to face into Kerry in two weeks' time. And, uh, you know, Kerry already on form side. You have to say that. Exactly. And speaking on that, they met them in the league. It didn't go their way. You know, they got a bit of a hammer in that day. I'm sure they've learned a lot and they look like a bit of a different Tyrone team now. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, and football and, and, and sport, you know, confidence and, and winning games makes a huge huge difference and the, the mindset of those players will have changed now they're also champions some of those players have bagged their first Ulster Senior Championship medal some have, have a, a good number in the bag but that will bring that group on there's no doubt about that there and it will you know I do expect them to put up against Kerry but you know as I say Kerry are the, the informed side but just, again it's going to be another intriguing uh, clash here in Crow Park and for you and for the year you've had how do you sum it all up how are the lads feeling has the dust settled at all or not really, Ashton. Uh, you know, we really hadn't much time to, you know, to to, to dwell or, or look back. And to be quite honest, and, and uh, it's still pretty raw. Uh, you know, it's a match that, you know, we felt we went into it, and uh, it was always going to be nip and tuck going, out, going with uh, playing Tyrone. Those championship matches are, are always the same. And but uh, you know, losing the man probably before half time was uh, was it was a big big uh, turning point in the game. But listen, ultimately Tyrone went on and, and, and took their scores and, and, and won the game. And uh, you know they're they're also champions this evening for a reason. So uh, yeah, listen, we'll, we'll see what happens now over the next number of weeks, and and, and uh, we'll take stock of what's what's going on. You know. And it must be tough for you coming here today and obviously looking out there on Crow Park, wishing that you were out there managing a, a team. Yeah, listen, we've been in, you know, this is fourth year in and we've been in, in the last three Ulster finals and, you know, luckily enough we won two of them, which was, uh, which was great, but... Uh, yeah, it's difficult when you come to an ultra final. And so it's uh, you know unique coming into Crow Park to an ultra final. You know, Clone is the the spiritual home of ultra finals, and you can't beat that atmosphere in 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 in, uh, in Clonus when you have thirty odd thousand packed in on a uh, on, on a warm sunny day in Clonus. But listen, it's great to get to Crow Park today with eighteen thousand spectators getting in here, and as I say, great from the spectators' point of view that they're back seeing football again. But and again, as I said, the match today. Uh, was another real Ulster Championship match went right down to the wire and uh, a lot of thrills a lot of spills a lot of mistakes but at the same time uh, it was still a thrilling match and how will Monaghan feel, be feeling after that I spoke to Banty there the manager and um, he was very upset I suppose he was emotional but just very proud of the lads yeah, you'd have to be, you know, the, the way they battled in that second half from being five points down and really threw everything at at, um, at Tyrone in the second half and probably at a stage felt they could go get get over the line and won it. You know, it went down to 15 all and they had their chances and ultimately they didn't take them. And, you know, at small margins and uh, as I say, the final score from, from Darren McCurry, I know it came probably six or seven minutes out, was a brilliant uh, mark that he took inside and, 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 he, and, he, and he converted the score. But uh, at the end of the day, their first half performance was probably their, their downfall today and, you know, Banty will be disappointed pointed with that there but ultimately those players really really give a big big shift and all the players out in that field are in really really empty you know and that must be a very tough aspect of management where you have to go into a dressing room obviously you're feeling devastated yourself but then to go in and try to speak to the lads what do you say 
No, it's very, very listen, it, it, I've been in a few of them, you know, I've been in one of the ultra final dressing rooms and I've been there as a player and as a manager and uh, there's no place worse than going into a losing the dressing room, especially in an ultra final and uh, hugely, it, it's very, very difficult to get over it. It, 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 it takes a number of weeks, number of months and, uh, you know, for those players now, there's no football, there's no back door, it's, it's uh, looking ahead to next season and when those guys get back in it'll be a number of months they'll go back to their clubs now but no it's, it's it's very difficult there's no doubt it's a very difficult place to be and just a last one then on Michael Murphy obviously we've seen him come off the last day but we're hoping we'll see more of Michael Murphy in the next championship next year yeah I've no doubt you will uh, Ashley I think he, you know Michael like everyone else was really disappointed with the way the, the game went uh, two weeks ago and uh, you know in sport these things can happen but uh, I'm sure Michael will be back uh, wearing the, the green and gold of Donegal in, in 2022